This week on Conversations with Club Night. People know the story of Steve Jobs. You must probably know what happened to me in that other company. I then had a decision to make. I really was following my dream and recognised where we needed to go, but this change had meant that it all come to a grinding halt. Now, we talk openly about mental health nowadays and I'm happy to share that. I mean, I was in a bad place. Um... You're listening to Conversations with Club Light, the podcast where we delve into what it's like owning a business in the fitness industry and offer practical insight to help you grow and thrive. It's been a challenging few years for us all, so join us every Tuesday for new episodes where we talk about everything from member retention in the economic climate we're currently in to building a long-term growth strategy for your club as well as stories of when I ran my gym. So, I'm your host, Wayne Heath. I'm looking forward to getting into this episode. So, welcome back to episode two. Episode two of Conversations with Club Right. And if you haven't already listened to episode one, I strongly suggest you go back to episode one before you listen to this today's episode because it'll all make a lot more sense if you listen to them in the right order. So you might remember on the last episode, episode one of this season, um, I kind of realised that things needed to change. And that kind of leads me very nicely into the next stages or the next steps I took to think about what that looked like. And it was all about trying to plan out in my head what we need to do, how we need to do it, and the way in which it needs to be done, and the jobs that we needed to simplify, automate, and make easier in the business, and try and get things into one place, which is something I was really struggling with. I kind of then did an awful lot of research which I kind of touched on a little bit before, but that research really led me down the road of certain things I hadn't even thought of, to be fair, but also things that I recognised, I say things, I'm talking about tools or features that I would need to grow the business and make my life easier, my customer's life easier, and retain more customers. So I recognised that I wanted to help the business grow. I needed to save time so I could get some more time back with my family because I was missing that desperately and also retain more customers so that the business itself was always growing. So we're always in a positive gain rather than a net gain of negativity. So that's kind of when I looked at these softwares and oh, it's really weird. If I look at all the research that I did, so much of it has not changed. And we're talking quite a few years down the road now. Uh, things haven't changed as much as I thought they might have done. Um, and those, a lot of those systems are still the same as they always were built on some very old technology that is also not necessarily moving forward with the times. And what I recognised was that I needed to find something that would do a job for me. But there wasn't anything. There wasn't anything out there that, from an understanding point of view, I could get my head round, actually was logical to use and simple, but even in many respects, didn't actually solve the problems I was achieving to solve. And software is always about solving people's problems. Um, I've learned also far more down the road now where I am today, but if I look at the development team we've got at Clubright, you know, they're amazing. They do incredible things. And there's lots of great developers out there, um, I'm sure. But the reality they haven't got is that people build things and make things work, and a developer most probably will create something that works. Does it work in the real world was the issue. And that was really came home to me when I was doing research with the other software providers that are now 
club-like competitors, um, I really had to look deep to see if it was solving the problems well enough or was easy enough for me to actually understand as a humble gym owner at the time. Because if I came from that angle, that's what I would do. So that's really where things were born. Um, a new company was born at the time from that idea. And then, of course, things grew, but things didn't work out quite as I expected. And if the truth are known, if people know the story about Steve Jobs, one of my personal entrepreneurial heroes, people know the story of Steve Jobs, you must probably know what happened to me in that other company. So, of course, like I said earlier, we all know what happened to Steve Jobs. Uh, we know how that then changed his life and how it also changed my life in the same way because I then had a decision to make. I really was following my dream and recognised where we needed to go, but this change had meant that it all come to a grinding halt. And I was left with either giving up completely, deciding that the world's imploded, things are not going to work for me, or I go again and make things better. If you go back to how I'm driven and think about episode one, we talked about the gym. I talked about the gym opened and, well, actually before the gym opened, there was a murder around the corner and then we were hit by a banking crisis. That doesn't come without its challenges. I overcame those challenges then. They were massive. I put everything on the line, including our house, to do that. So I was in the same position in a way, again, but I knew that my passion and desire to drive the next stage and make things even better was really what it was all about. And I remember this distinctly. 26th of October 2016, at four o'clock in the morning, and I don't mind mentioning that, that's how mental I was at the time. At four o'clock in the morning, I worked out that the new business name was going to be called Clubrite, and the domain was available. I bought that domain and went to sleep. So there you have it. I bought a domain name. Well, I guess that was the start of everything, really, and all the stress, the worries, good thoughts, bad thoughts in terms of, you know, we talk openly about mental health nowadays, and I'm happy to share that. I mean, I was in a bad place. Um, And back in the room. Yeah, got my shit together now. We can have a chat. I can carry on from where we were. I think hopefully that moment proves that it was a hard time. It was a really hard time. We didn't know if we were going to be able to pay our bills. We didn't have enough money to even start up the business, if the truth are known. And I didn't know where the next piece of help or next route was even going to come from. But it was what was clear in my heart, I knew that I was going to do the right thing. And I knew damn well that surrounding myself, and I'm talking about another big name that I've always um, revered, I suppose, is Richard Branson. Something he's always said is surround yourself with the right people. And guess what? I don't think I was with the right people. That was the bit that it really came back to me to realise that being with the right people is what makes a business successful. It's also what allows the business to achieve its dreams, its goals, and the things that we want to make out of that. So, yeah, that was the start. And there was a whole load more than a domain name to even think about. It was a case of, right, am I the techie? Absolutely not. Can I write code? Nope. Haven't got a clue. Well, I've got a pretty good idea now, but physically, I can't write the code. But what I have got is a head that understands business. I've got a person in me that understands how a gym works. And everything we put into Club Right today is all about that. It's about making things simple. It's about making things easy. And it's making things relevant to how a business works and not just making things up for just a whim or the sheer hell of it. So the next stage really was about building that team um, and building the tech team was the first instance because without a piece of tech, we didn't have a product to even sell. Um, 
And that was, in the very early days, myself and Paul, who's now our CTO, um, the pair of us, I was selling, Paul was building. We were then onboarding customers, looking after customers, and so, so very quickly got to a critical mass of customers using our product um, in the early days that was built on just two people. And actually, if I pinch myself now to look at a group of a team of 21 people now, it's amazing to think how that's changed and the level of depth of experience we've got across every facet of the business now. But it all started with two people, me um, working from home again, um, in my studio in the garden, uh, nestled next door to my drum kit. If some people know, as a musician, you'll probably know how passionate I am about music. And it was me, a desk, a laptop, a drum kit, which I mentioned earlier, but you know, that was there to take away a bit of stress. So I can imagine a few people's heads I was hitting at that time, but get where I'm coming from, right? And Paul, who was building the tech at the other side, and we literally started from the beginning, scoped out what we wanted to achieve. And if I look at that first iteration compared to now, oh my God, it's just light years apart. Now we've got clubs that have you have got thousands of members, thousands of bookings, loads of payments. It, it just the story just goes on and on. And throughout the whole of this season, I want to be sharing the features, the benefits, and the the way the company's grown, and why we've done things. They haven't just been done on a whim. They've been done for good reason. They've been done for good reason to help businesses grow. So if you're listening to this now, you're most probably trying to think, well, how's this relevant to me? Well, actually, it's all relevant to you because I've been there, not done it, seen the T-shirt, whatever analogy you want to put to it, but there is a real truth in that it doesn't matter. In a gym business, we're all faced with the similar problems. And those problems are the kind of experiences that we've gone through with our customers. I personally had in our gym and try to solve those problems and it's really important to kind of recognize and sit back sometimes and look at that so with gym owners that may be sitting there going well you know i've not got enough leads coming in for new members what can i do to get new leads well there's so many things you can do you can start to look at your existing customer base where did they come from Maybe understand a little bit more about why your existing customers love your business. Because believe you me, you might not be getting the sales through right now, but I can guarantee there's shed loads of customers that love your business because they wouldn't be with you for the years they've been with you. So try to understand why they like it. And we're always looking for like-minded people. So you won't get everyone join your club. And I have to say, it was an interesting revelation for me because I recognised... If I'd lost a sale, there was nothing more frustrating. And from time to time, rarely I hasten to add, we might lose a sale with club, right, yeah? That's most probably because our product wasn't the right fit. No one's embarrassed about that. It just needs to be right for the customer. Um, and it's not always about gym owners thinking about the price of their memberships and instantly trying to reduce their price because a, a budget gym has just opened up the road. It's not all about that. It's understanding why your current customer actually likes your business. If they actually understand why they like your business. You can then find next like-minded people. So don't always think it's the it's everyone because not everyone will buy what you have. And actually, I always use this analogy a lot where you can have a product, you can make that product a pound but if they don't like it and don't desire it, guess what? They ain't gonna buy it. They absolutely are not gonna buy that product because they'd see no benefit to them and they don't feel comfortable or relevant to them. So price isn't always an issue. And obviously there's a whole lot more we can talk about with this subject, but in terms of where we've been and problems we're trying to solve, that's one. It could be retaining members. Now why, why are we losing members? Could it be that the business isn't very clean. And that seems a crazy thing to do, but the amount of surveys, I, surveys I've seen over the years, 
that typify why someone might have left a gym or criticise a gym, cleanliness is a real big one. And I'd argue after COVID, you know, cleanliness really shouldn't be an issue in a business now um, because all our businesses should be super sharp and super clean because we kind of want them to be, don't we? No, we want to make sure that the surfaces we touch are not potentially got germs on them. Uh, we are very conscious of so many things like that. I mean, I remember back in the very early days of Club Right, a very popular version of someone entering one of our uh, club using Club Right was to put their fingers onto an iPad. People don't like touching things anymore. Not as much as they used to do. Don't get me wrong, confidence is coming back, but... Let's be honest, you know, fingerprint reading and touching devices and where you know, you're in contact with things that are publicly contactable is something that people are mindful of now. Prior to COVID, no one had given it a second thought. No one had given it a thought. So it's always evolving and it's always changing. So the problems that people experience in their business are the things that we like to solve. So today's challenges, well... We've had COVID. We've now got a crisis in terms of cost of living crisis. And that comes with a whole new load of issues, reasons why we might want to retract our business, contract it, not spend any money to grow it. So many thoughts, negative predominantly, are going to go through your mind. Um, and I would kind of counter so much of that by saying that, yes, there is a cost of living crisis. What's that actually done? What it's actually meant, and there was an exceptionally good program recently about supermarkets, and there's one particular supermarket that begins with an A. We all know who it is, and I'm not here to advertise it, but we shop there and love the place, right? But why has that become successful? It's become successful because it's offering good value. In majority of cases, could well be the cheapest, but it's not always necessarily the cheapest. But People are after value. All different abilities and income streams. You know, everyone's got family to look after. You've got the cost of living putting up fuel bills. Now, as we enter into winter again shortly, although we're looking out the windows right now, it doesn't quite look like winter, but hey-ho. Um, you know, we're, we're in a situation where the cost of living is really having an impact on business decisions. And I think don't always cut to what you think is the right thing to do. So don't necessarily go straight away down the road of cutting your prices. I would go back and say, right, look at how many members do you need to be paying you X amount of money per month to cover your bills. It's all about recurring income now, more than ever before. If we, in the past, a lot of gym owners can go down that route aggressively looking for special offers to just get that bit of cash into, into the bank. You know, offering you know, 12 months for the price of 10 or something like that, a knockdown price. Not a bad thing to do and not something you won't still do. But think about covering your bills so you can sleep at night. Think about gaining and building recurring income so that you can, I keep mentioning it, sleep at night because when we had our gym, my biggest goal was to make sure that all our bills were paid for completely by the recurring income that we got on direct debit each month. That was my goal. So I could then not worry. The truth of the matter is I didn't worry. I also looked at the pricing structure we had. We had the most ridiculously simple pricing structure, bar none. Now, I'm not saying have more than don't have more than two membership plans but if you think about cost of living which is very prevalent in people's minds right now and you offer two ways for someone to pay that's a very different decision to offering loads of membership plans so what do i mean by that i suppose in very simple terms you've had someone come into your gym they've had a look around you've shown them all the virtues of joining your club and the benefits of why they're going to change their health and well-being and be a better person, a fitter person, whatever goals they're looking to achieve. You've had all those great conversations. That person's now decided to join. When you offer how they join, offer two options. I mean, try it. It may not work for you. I think it will. Because if you just say to them, right, 
you can join by paying up front, I don't know, 300 pounds a month, which will make numbers simple. So 300 pounds a month, 300 pounds a month, 300 pounds for the year, 300 pounds for the year, or 30 pounds a month. What makes more sense? Which way would you like to join the club? Doing it that way, if you thought about your numbers before you got to this point, of course, but if you recognize that you need X number of customers paying you 30 pounds a month to pay your bills, that's your goal. I will pretty much guarantee, especially at the cost of the living crisis we're in right now, so many more people will choose that 30 pound a month option. Whether you've got contracts or not is another discussion and something else we'll touch on in other episodes. But make it something affordable and covers your costs of running your business. But you could argue the old annual or someone that pays you up front is the icing on the cake. But as a cost of living crisis, which is so prevalent for people right now, making something that's affordable doesn't always have to be the cheapest. So don't think it's got to be the cheapest. Don't think you have to hit and be lower than the budget gym down the road. Don't think like that at all. Because people will go to different businesses for different reasons. They'll go to those businesses for the services and the place they enjoy and feel comfortable to go to. That's really important. All you then need to do is just find that right median amount per month that you wish to charge that covers your bills. And the, the annuals can be the icing on the cake. So there we have it. That concludes an in-depth look at me, where we come from, what we started, a vulnerable moment. And let's be fair, we've all, we've all had those terrible times. I've had those terrible times. And episode two, kind of shares a bit of that position but really glad that you joined us today and thank you very much and looking forward to sharing episode three thanks for listening we really want to help as many business owners in the fitness industry as we can so if you know someone who could also benefit from listening to our episodes remember to share it with them that's really important i want to get that message out there And if you're enjoying conversations with Club Right, hopefully you are, um, don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.